as we think ahead to August of 2023, which will be an exciting time with the opening of the new Klein, and we think about the additions um, being added to Winsong to make Winsong a K-5 school as well. Uh, and we also think ahead to the additions and the work being done related to the bond at Westwood and Bales. We're coming to you today to really talk about uh, the necessary reconfiguration of grade levels as a result of these bond projects. So our new client will be pre-K through fifth grades. Uh, our wind song will be kindergarten through fifth grade. And then even when we think about Westwood and Bales, those will still function in their current grade level settings. We know that they're separated by just a short breezeway, have dynamic leadership teams, but even the work that we need to consider as we think about the benefits of kindergarten through fifth grade schools. So it's no doubt that we're super excited about much of the bond work that is already taking place. And in many of our meetings with architects, we've heard this quote come back to us, and it's the idea that instruction should drive construction, right? So it's the idea that high quality instructional practices that are student-centered and authentic should drive what our new future learning spaces look like. So that further promotes a lot of research and conversation around what does that look like at kindergarten through fifth grade campuses, or further pre-K through fifth grade campuses. So I want to walk you today just through a bit of research and things that we need to consider as we think about reconfiguring our grade levels at our Friendswood campuses. And then also the implications, so the work that our team will be up to in the next few years to prepare for the reconfiguration of our grade levels. So the most compelling research that we have discovered around when you're thinking about shifting to a K-5 model or pre-K through fifth grade model, if you will, is this idea of transitions. So transitions meaning how many times a student moves to a different campus or moves to a different school culture. So research tells us that the higher number of school transitions can result in decreased student achievement, even going as far to state that achievement typically rebounds in the second year after a school transition. So in thinking ahead to K-5 schools, knowing that our students will have to leave schools a lot less, right? So we're minimizing some of those transitions and able to hang on to kids a little bit longer. The next bit of research around school transitions is this idea around too many transitions can lead to negative effects on instructional continuity and communication across grade levels. So thinking about a student who may leave one campus and then head to the next campus while still in their elementary intermediate school years can lead to some gaps in curriculum, can, can lead to some broken kind of choppy instructional practices. So in thinking ahead to K-5 schools, really excited about the possibilities to keep that instructional continuity alive for our students. So the next bit of research that we want to bring up when it comes to considering K-5 schools and that reconfiguration is the idea of maximizing parental engagement and involvement. So research will tell us that when parent volunteers are spread across multiple campuses, this, this can decrease the amount that they can be involved. If you have multiple children and you're trying to divide your time between multiple campuses, this can decrease the number of parents who can really dedicate their time to being involved and having true partnerships with campuses. And research also tells us that parents are less likely to invest as deeply in a homeschool partnership when their child might only be at that campus for two to three school years. Next, we'd like to focus on this idea of student mentorship opportunities and instructional experiences. So schools with many grade levels have more opportunities for older students to serve as mentors, to tutor younger students, as well as to hone their leadership skills. So the idea that fifth graders can go back and serve kindergarten students, right? That we're giving fourth and fifth graders true opportunities to be strong mentors to our youngest learners is a really exciting opportunity for us to have here in Friendswood ISD. Multiple schools with fewer grade levels decreases the vertical alignment of curriculum. And we talked about this a little bit with school transitions, right? But it's much easier for a pre-K through fifth grade campus to really consider if we make these decisions instructionally in kindergarten, what effect does that have on our students as they get to fifth grade? Some examples could be, are we calling things the same thing? Or are we using the same kind of academic vocabulary to really support the academic achievement of our students? Research also centers around the idea that oftentimes when you have schools with fewer grade levels, assessment practices can become misaligned, the data not being analyzed, as thoroughly and with as much detail to really benefit and drive the instruction for students. So we look forward to having K-5 campuses. We can really have common assessment practices and common assessment conversations to really be able to drive great instruction for children all the way pre-K through fifth grade. 
Now let's move to the implications of all of this research. So really when we talk implications, we're talking about what is the work that we need to be up to and strongly considering and working towards as we prepare to open our new campuses, new additions, and prepare for that pre-K through fifth grade model. And you'll notice on these slides that we really have centered a lot of this work around our strategic plan goals. It was important to align a lot of this work to work that has been incredibly important to us over the last few years here in Friendswood ISD as well. So the first implication really centers around the idea of transportation access and operations. So we know as a Friendswood team, we're gonna to need to take a closer look at the adjustment of bus schedules, their routes, and the costs associated with some of these adjustments analysis of school start and dismissal times, as well as how are we utilizing personnel on each of these campuses and what might that look like at a K-5 campus. The next implication is really related to curriculum and instruction and how we intend to work to align those for our pre-K through fifth graders, so ages four through 11 years old. So any future decisions related to instruction and curriculum need to be made through the lens of supporting pre-K through fifth graders. We've started a lot of this amazing work. Our teachers have been working very hard on aligned scope and sequences across campuses, having vertical team conversations with grade levels below them, grade levels above them, and having conversations about the best way to support kids as they make grade level transitions. We talked about this previously as well, but plan to dig a lot deeper into our assessment practices and making sure that those decisions that are made regarding assessments, that we're really making sure that everybody is involved in those decisions and the training and being educated on what do these assessments, what does this data really tell us about students, and how are we using that data to drive further instruction for our pre-K through fifth graders. And then collaboration and communication of teachers across grade levels will be incredibly important and will be a strong priority. And making sure at the district level that our professional learning supports this cross-campus collaboration, supports this cross-grade level collaboration, again, as we prepare to welcome a wide range of grade levels to our new campuses. And the next implication is around academic programming. So we wanna continue discussions regarding alignment of our response to intervention practices. So currently at each of our campuses right now, we have students that require different types of support. And so wanting to really engage in some deep conversations with our K2, K3 campuses, and our three, five campuses to build some commonalities, to engage in some conversations about how can we work to align those practices and programs to ensure that continuity for, for our students at our K-5 campuses. These conversations will include our supplemental reading program supports, our pullout interventions for math and reading, our gifted and talented programs, and for our students with English as a second language. We also want to think deeply and consider scheduling benefits and needs for developmental appropriateness. So when we think about having students who might possibly be four years old all the way to fifth graders at the age of 11, what is the best schedule for those kiddos? You know, currently we might have experienced scheduling around the needs of a pre-K through second grader or a third through fifth grader. Now we have a much greater task in front of us. What is the best learning environment and times for students of a wide variety of ages? The next implication we wanna consider is our social emotional learning and our community partnerships. We wanna more deeply analyze, refine, and implement character development and social emotional learning programs that are appropriate for ages four through 11. So an example of why this might be a big implication is at Klein, we have our kindergarten through second graders and they are very involved in bucket filling. So how do we take this concept of bucket filling and make it appropriate all the way pre-K through fifth grade? Is there any work that we need to do to ensure that those programs are relevant and meaningful for a wide range of ages? Secondly, we, we wanna support our counselors with professional learning needed to support a wide range of ages. Do they feel equipped to be able to meet the needs of a diverse range of ages as well? and then analyzing and making plans to adjust and create community partnerships that are aligned to the interest of four through 11 year olds as well. So who are we bringing in to enhance the learning of our students and making sure that we can take those partnerships and make them relevant and meaningful again to pre-K through fifth graders. The last implication that we want to consider is the idea of leadership. When we talk leadership, we're talking about district leadership, campus leadership, and all sorts of coaches, teacher leaders, and instructional specialists that we currently have on campus. So the first piece to that would be supporting leaders in establishing conditions for vertical collaboration and decisions related to instruction. By vertical collaboration, we mean the idea that multiple grade levels are coming together to talk about where kids are and where they need to be. The second part of leadership would be supporting leadership and really learning a lot more together 
about best practices to foster pre-K through fifth grade parental involvement and a culture of unity across a broader range of ages. So how do we really build a culture of collaboration and unity at these new campuses with multiple grade levels? And then lastly, supporting shifting mindsets of our community, of each other, of parents regarding these new grade level configurations. It'll be new, it'll be different, but how do we come together and embrace this idea of a pre-K through fifth grade community? So in closing, we wanted to begin the conversation today about why Friends at ISD is moving towards a K-5 model of schools. As we continue this work and dive deep into the implications that were shared today, we vow to keep you updated and informed each step of the way. Thank you.